I want to welcome everybody to another In My Feels episode. Today we're actually going to talk about what happens when we die or don't die per se. As you know, with me, which which is what I believe, no one really dies. We just transform. And before we get started, you know, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, conditionings, everything on the inside creates your outside exterior. So my question for all of you guys is how are you feeling right now in this moment? And really dive in, really dive into those feelings, extract them, listen to them, you know, really, really feel how you're feeling and be open about it. And, you know, I set a challenge last week of asking someone who you may not normally ask how they're feeling and then kind of diving into your own feelings and and everything else. So I'd love, you know, some feedback, hit me up on, you know, uh, leave me a review on Apple podcasts or Twitter or Instagram. I'm now actually on TikTok, which is super strange well for me, but why not when in Rome? And how am I feeling? I'm actually feeling really, really good. I, I just got back from, from Vegas. It was my um, younger brother's kind of elope uh, marriage. Uh, and it was amazing, special, very, very special uh, uh, time. Had some great dinners. Um, I took my daughter to see the fountain and, and just kind of living or reliving life through her eyes is actually a really special spiritual um, thing for me because I love to see her grow and experience life in the best kind of way she can. Okay, so what, what I guess, you know, what happens when we die? It's kind of a difficult concept to kind of get your head around and because, you know, this, this, this kind of notion of permanency as, as we as physical forms or humans, we always look at things as beginning and an end when if birth is life, then death is also life. There's not an ending to birth. And I'm going to just run over some points, you know, because the thing I love about talking about this podcast is that bringing the kind of practical spirituality to, uh, you know, to everyone who, who's listening because, you know, death is a unique experience to the individual. And, you know, the, the, uh, what I love is the podcast is really, really growing. You know, the, the, we're creating this collective consciousness of kind of, you know, practical spirituality and positivity, which I want to keep on that wave and really spread the message. So collectively, let's, let's kind of stay on that path. And when I say it's, 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 you know, it's unique, death is unique to your own experience is because, in life, you manifest everything to every finite, finite detail. The, the, you know, before you come here, you have agreements with who the people you're coming back with. You're born into the situations that you want to be born into. I know it's a different, difficult notion, but that's a whole nother podcast. I'm just going to run through kind of the bullet points just to give you a basic understanding of, of how I see things. And as you manifest in life, you also manifest in death. So thoughts become things in life. And so thoughts become things in death. I don't know if you've ever seen that that Robin Williams film, um, What Dreams May Come. Beautiful film. And I remember watching it when I was kind of younger and, and really being drawn to it and loved it. Great film. And I mean, if you haven't seen it, I, I really have to talk about it because it's kind of somewhat part of the show. But it's um, a, a parent who, who lose some ki- children in, in a car accident. And then I guess Robin Williams passes over similar in a similar fashion i think i can't remember the full details but then you live his experience of passing over so he's in this world there's there's elements of you know fear and who is this and who is this and he sees someone who is who he, who he recognizes as an old friend and it's kind of this developing world of an experience his experience of his death it's a beautiful beautiful story and you know his wife is all alone in physical reality and he can see her or feel her in this kind of different, this non-physical realm. And then I think his wife ends up um, committing suicide and then she ends up going to avoid a place of no return, all this type of things. And, you know, um, and then he goes, goes and goes to this, this void place to go and bring her back out to it. It's a really, really beautiful story and kind of encompasses the way the characters are feeling in life is how they're feeling in death. And it's that same experience that we have. So what happens when we die? So, there's, I mean, I've had, you know, so many near-death experience people come on and every single um, death experience is unique to the individual, which shows me as evidence of the manifestation aspect of it. You are what you think and feel and your belief system towards life and, you know, conditionings and everything else is which creates your experience. So your belief systems towards death too also creates your experience. So, for example, I don't know if you believe um, in a great judgment that will happen when, when you when you you know transform or, or when you pass over, you will see that. 
you, that's what will happen. You'll, you'll get a sense of the, the kind of judgment. Or if you feel like, you know, your, your whole life flashes before your eyes, you'll see that. All these type of things that have been kind of conditioned into us is our belief systems to, to the passing over is what we, we will experience. And it's almost like, you know, back to the kind of judgment thing. When you, when you have judgment towards someone else, you allow attractions to judgments back to you. That's the way manifestations work. You are what you think and feel. And another, you know, if you believe you're going to see, you know, this, this Jesus, this Christ consciousness or this, this kind of religious experience, you'll see it. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a kind of magical way to kind of look at things. And, you know, some people even experience voids. You know, they go into this kind of ending void of nothingness. But what they don't realize is they're experiencing a void. And they come back with a consciousness of having a void. Because, you know, it's, it's that some people, and I used to live in my life as a void too, you know, like it didn't have any meaning. I I was, you know, anxious and depressed and all these type of things. And that's the way you're living in the void. So it's up to us to get ourselves and to help ourselves to really manifest our experience and decide on who we want to be right now. But all those experiences that you see kind of in that crossing over period, uh, it won't last. It doesn't last because you, you step into this knowing the physical form of you drops this kind of veil and you become this and this knowing you ask a question you know the answer you want to see someone you, you you're immediately there with that person it's, it's kind of based on a feeling it's almost like you know when you your senses here well i say six senses what is it taste touch smell uh sight uh feel i, I, I can't remember all of them and, and then the inner sense is the sixth sense um and, and in, in non-physical form you step into this place of knowing and instead of, you know, seeing and touching and smelling all those things, you do it with th- thoughts and feelings. So it's a very instantaneous thing. It's almost like when you have an unresisted thought and then the, the manifestation of that unresisted thought comes super quick. In non-physical form, your thoughts come instantly. So it takes you a little while to kind of step into that, that place of that thought becomes so instant that it can kind of make you take a step back. But this is the learning process. This is everything that's going on during that period. And as you know, I talk about certain books which really, really dive in on on these experiences. I don't know, Seth Speaks, The Eternal Fidelity of the Soul, really dives in on the kind of deaf experience and what, what we feel, what we think, all that type of stuff. Conversation with God, Books Free talks about it. Abraham Hicks talks a ton about it. And the reason why I'm talking about that, because I, I don't really talk about deaf anymore, because I used to fear deaf, like, like scared. I used to be so scared of it. And now I no longer fear it because I read these books and it gives me this sense of knowing of something that I already knew, which I didn't know before, but it's this kind of relaxation to me. It's not the end. It's just us humans who put endings on things. And when I used to fear, it, I'd see it everywhere, whether it be on TV or TV shows or people in your life and all that type of stuff. And now I am because I've now focused on it and looked at it. Guess what happens? The fear of it disappears. It's like when I'm feeling super anxious or sad or you know, depressed or, or all these type of things, I look at it, I question it, I question it, question it, question it. Why am I feeling this way? I really get in touch with my own feelings and then guess what happens? It disappears. And it was also me, you know, that fear element of it. So I was searching for the truth of death. But what I come to the realization is we are the truth of death. You are the experience you are the manifesto. You are the power. You, everything in your life is you in life and, I don't know, non-physical form or death per se. So once we step into that kind of non-physical form, quote unquote death, we become this, this, this experience, this, this kind of, I don't know, this, this knowing, this stepping into something, this, this growing, this evolutionary thing. And for example, I had uh, Jose Hernandez on the show who during life, really feared his dad and feared the relationship and everything else. Uh, didn't really get along with his dad. And then when he had a near-death experience and he died, he flatlined. Who did he see? He stepped into this, this kind of, this, this void. And it was like the stripping away of his physical body. And it was like a, you know, a, a, a hole that he jumped into and started stripping away, stripping away. And then he was like in this beautiful landscape, this beautiful, serene place. And the first person he saw was his dad. And they, they kind of had this 
coming together moment of emotion and love and you know i'm sorry that this then this and this is kind of you know making up for lost time and all this type of beautiful stuff that's that's unique to his experience and then once you're kind of in this 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 non-physical form space you have choices i don't like to say i'm going to use it as a practical example as you the choices is yours everything is yours you are what you manifest but let's just say the kind of choices become i guess become more prominent you know you can study your life um, your previous lives, you can relive um, certain moments through experiences that you've had. Um, you can choose to come back in physical form, the kind of reincarnational thing, but that's a whole nother spiel. You can visit new worlds, um, alternate u- universes. You are the creator of your experience, and it's no different in non physical form. There is no separation. We see that the, the life and death is separate. But as I said before, in in the collective consciousness, we are all one. We are all manifesting everything together. We are all adding to the collective consciousness. The only thing that separates our world from, from, or that this, this physical world from non-physical world is our belief systems and our conditionings is that we believe it is, that it is separate. It's not the same thing. So what happens is that it becomes a knowing for us and therefore it is separate. And then from, from this space of non-physical form, Again, what, I, what, what you think and feel is instant. So if you feel like someone who's in phys- physical form or who's living in, in, in physical form and you think about them, you're immediately with them. So, you know, and, and I speak about this, you know, so why are we here? Why are we in this kind of physical reality? We're here to know ourselves through experience. As without experience, how can we know? How can we? We'll just be an idea of what we think we are, who we are. It's like one day when you're, when you're super happy about something and the next day you're super sad about something, you know what happiness is through that experience. And you now you know what sadness is through that experience. In non-physical form, if you want to experience something, how can you experience it without, without experiencing it? It would just become an idea. Let's talk about source energy, kind of where we came from. The inner being of you is always expanding because you are expanding in physical reality. This is what we call our life experience. And we have lived many, many lives from our source energy, which continues to grow. It has to continue to grow. And you can only do that through experience. How many of us has made the same mistake over and over again and not learned from them? Well, it's, just, it's the exact same from the many lives we have lived. It's up to us to learn from this, this, this experience, this physical experience, and really decide on who you want to be right now. What's the reason why we don't remember who we were in previous lives or why we've come here and any of these type of things is because we are starting anew and we're creating who we want to be in this new experience. And I really, I really see that clearly now. It's taken, you know, an an eternity or millions and millions of years, however you want to look at it practically, you know, and look at society today, our collective consciousness and the state of the world right now, we are still in a very primitive state. As I've mentioned in my previous podcasts, Collectively, we have a lot of spiritual growth and and understanding ourselves and the power we we all have to make collective incredible changes to our experience and the experience of others. And, you know, I've had um, some great, you know, people with some near-death experiences on the show. Dr. Eben Alexander, who's amazing, has an incredible book called Proof of Heaven. Um, And he talks about, you know, pretty much from a space of his inner being. I think that's who he was experiencing um, during his kind of experience of death. And, you know, he was a uh, neurosurgeon who, you know, operated on the brain and he ended up with a, with a, with a, um, a spinal disease, which was destroying his brain. Um, and he came back from that, made a full recovery and came back with this incredible experience. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a mysterious, beautiful kind of, I don't know, idea or notion or, 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 or knowing. And I, I've kind of stepped into that knowing space now because I like where I am. I, you know, I, I no longer fear the things I used to fear because I mean, I'm pretty practical. So if there is nothing after this, then fuck it. What, what difference does it make? And that's kind of how I, how I break down my practicality and spirituality is, um, our lives are too magical and that, um, that we can manifest everything we want just as easy as we can manifest everything we don't want. So how is it not the same in non-physical form, but we are beings of love. So therefore in non-physical forms, we are the true beings of love. And that's kind of how I equate this, this kind of, you know, 
I call it now life after life. And again, you know, collectively, consciously, I want us to keep building, to keep this kind of positive wave, you know, um, keep these in your mind that we are healed, the, our bodies are healed, our minds are healed, our, our family and friends are healed, the planet is healed, um, every, every, everything is healed. Um, and I want to keep, keep, keep on that wave. So again, you know, hit me up on, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. Um, I'd love to hear from you and keep growing this collective consciousness experience.